Hello everyone, it's the Metal Geek. How y'all doing? Okay, so generally you guys are going to think of this as a gaming channel because, well, it's a gaming channel. But today we're going to be taking a look at something a little different. Talking about a subject that's also just a little bit different. And I'm going to show you how to do something. In fact, I'm going to show you how to make this very low carb, very alcoholic, Long Island iced tea. Okay, whoa, wait a minute. Where did that come from, Metal Geek? You're a gaming channel and now you're talking about alcohol? Well, guys, I love my games. I love my alcohol. But I do drink responsibly. And please, I hope all of you out there do too. But if you want to enjoy a really nice drink, this is me showing you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to preface this, guys. If you kind of just want to skip to the recipe, uh, the time will be showing down here. You can just slide the little slider and skip to that part if you want. Uh, but I hope you do stick around and listen a little bit. I kind of want to tell you why I'm showing you how to make this low-carb Long Island iced tea. Okay, a little bit of a backstory. As much as I'd like to say I've always taken care of myself, unfortunately, I used to eat a lot of junk and I used to drink a lot of, like, high-carb beers when I was drinking alcohol and stuff like that. And unfortunately, after years of abusing my body with all that junk, I was diagnosed as pre-diabetic. Good news is, is if you are pre-diabetic or even type 2 diabetic, you could still reverse the diabetes. But to be frank, in order to do that, you pretty much have to go on a low carb diet because carbs are what's going to do you in. Now, a lot of people don't understand this, but carbs, they basically break down in your body as sugars. Not all carbs. Uh, some break down slow enough that they don't really raise sugar levels, but a lot of carbs do. So you drink a high carb drink like a soda with sugar in it, or an alcoholic drink like a beer like instead of like a light beer you're having like a regular just high carb beer that's the kind of stuff that kind of pushes your body over the limits and we don't really realize that because we're never really taught that in our lives now if you get a pre-diabetes diagnosis pretty much the first thing that's going to go through your mind is that i have to give up everything i love Give up the pizza, give up the rices, which means Chinese food is out. Give up pretty much anything that has a lot of carbs. Bread, even whole grain wheat breads have a quite a bit of carbs in it, though it's much less than the white bread. Yes, even giving up, if you're me and you like to have a drink, giving up your beers. And it's like, Great. So most of us are going to just not. And we're going to be like, oh, I'm just going to eat a little bit less of it, drink a little bit less of it, and, well, everything's going to be fine. But it's not. The reality is, is you're going to have to change your diet. But it does not mean you have to give up your favorite foods and doesn't mean you have to stop drinking alcohol. Again, drink responsibly. There's still a lot of things you could do to your body if you drink too much alcohol. Just, if you want to drink, you don't have to give it up. You just have to be smart. And what does that mean? It means getting rid of the carbs. Not entirely. Have some carbs in your life. But get the carbs down. And what that means for you is finding out how to make your favorite foods and your favorite drinks in low carb forms. I can still eat pizza, trust me. I eat pizza all the time. I just don't eat regular as you would think pizza. The crust, too many carbs. So you have to find a low carb way to make that pizza and I figured that out. So now I can have pizza and I can enjoy it. And it tastes like pizza because it is pizza, but it's just not going to raise my sugar levels through the roof. 
I can have Chinese food. But instead of using regular rice, you use cauliflower rice. And trust me, you can find ways to make these things and have them taste just as good as you remember the original forms of them. So if you are still watching at this point and you didn't skip right to the recipe, thank you. I do appreciate it. I am rambling a little bit, but let's get to the low carb Long Island iced tea. Okay, guys, so this Long Island iced tea is pretty much... It's a Long Island iced tea, but I do do things a little bit differently. And some people are going to go, the way you're doing it is sacrilegious. You can't make a Long Island iced tea like that. It's not the right way to make it. First and foremost, there is no real exact recipe for Long Island iced teas. Some people would say there is, but there's like four or five different people throughout history that claim that they are the ones who invented it and they were all different recipes. So there really is no right or wrong way to make it as far as I'm concerned, as long as the end result is it tastes like a Long Island iced tea and it has the punch of a Long Island iced tea. In other words, a Long Island iced tea is a very alcoholic drink and you want it to be, well, alcoholic. You want to feel that punch. So my recipe pretty much calls for the same things you would generally think of when you think of a Long Island iced tea. Normally, or at least the modern version of the Long Island iced tea, is made with gin, it's made with rum, it's made with vodka, it's made with tequila, it's made with triple sec, five spirit alcohols. And then, then you can squeeze some lemon or lemon juice into there and give it a little bit more of a bitter flavor. And then there's a splash of cola of your choice, you know, Coke, Pepsi, and there's your Long Island iced tea. My version still calls for tequila, gin, vodka, and rum. But, unfortunately, triple sec has a lot of sugar and carbs in it. Now, most spirit alcohols do not have carbs in them. They're sugar-free, carb-free. That's not the case with triple sec. So that means if I want a low-carb Long Island iced tea, triple sec is out of the picture. Okay, so Long Island iced teas generally have five spirit alcohols in them. You are basically taking one of those out. So then you now you're down to four. So won't that make it less alcoholic? What about the punch you were talking about? Well, guys, you could still do that. You just add in a little bit more of the other alcohols for that. And I'll talk about that as I go along. But you're still going to want that, like, orangey flavor to it that the triple sec gives it. So how are you going to achieve that? Well, I achieve it in two ways. And this is how I do it. You're going to need orange extract. And you're actually going to need iced tea. This is the sacrilegious part. Long Island iced teas do not have iced tea in it. Bear with me, guys. I'm going to explain all of this. Traditionally, no. Long Island iced teas do not have any tea in it. But again, there are ways you have to do things when you have to substitute for the original recipes. And I tried some low-carb Long Island iced teas without the iced tea in it. And while they were okay, I'm a Long Island iced tea snob and I know what they taste like. I have been, that has been the absolute drink of my choice for over 20 years. And I know what they taste like. And if I can't get close to that flavor in a low-carb form, then... It's not going to work. The low carb forms that I was seeing out there pretty much has the ingredients I told you, including the orange extract. And you could also put in some lime juice to kind of give it a more bitter flavor. The problem is, is it still kind of lacked that. What's the word I'm looking for? Tangy kind of flavor 
that you would normally get from a Long Island iced tea. So here's the thing is that I do realize that by adding actual iced tea to a Long Island iced tea, that could backfire in a very big way and it could end up just tasting like a twisted tea. But not only did I avoid that, this recipe of all the recipes I've tried is the closest I've gotten to this actually tasting like a Long Island iced tea. So much so that I can't even tell the difference. And I told you I'm very picky about my Long Island iced teas. I gave it to my fiance who's had plenty of Long Island iced teas. She loved it. So this is how I avoided making this taste like a twisted tea. First, we're going to add in our ice and we're going to put that into a shaker. Now, you don't have to use a shaker. I like to do that because it really mixes the, the alcohols together well. And again, you don't have to. You can just put it in a glass and kind of stir it around and mix it up that way. Then I'm going to put in the gin. Now, you can start with any of them. It just so happens that I started with gin. And I'm going to use this shot glass and it's about an ounce. So I'm going to use about a half an ounce of each spirit alcohol. You can go higher if you want the drink to be a little bit more alcoholic, or you could go a little bit lower if you want it a little less alcoholic. But for me, uh, with this glass, it's about 12 ounces, give or take. I'm using about a half an ounce of each spirit. We're going to put in our gin. You put in your rum. Your vodka. And then comes your tequila. Now guys, this is, tequila is kind of the base of a Long Island iced tea. It kind of really gives it a good, like tangy type of feel when you're drinking a Long Island iced tea. With the tequila, I put in about three quarters of an ounce, just shy of an ounce. That way it really gives it the flavor I'm looking for. Now, here comes our iced tea. I use Diet Snapple half and half lemon iced tea. You can use different ones. This just happens to be the brand that works best for me when I'm making this particular Long Island iced tea. But feel free to experiment, guys. That is going to get three ounces. Then I'm going to put in about two to two and a half ounces of water. Wait, water? Why water? Are you trying to make this a light drink? Well, first and foremost, I could put in another two and a half ounces of the iced tea. It's still going to dilute the alcohol because there's no more alcohol going in there. So adding the water really isn't changing how much, you know, volume of alcohol is in there. The reason why the water is in there is to help the Long Island iced tea taste like a Long Island iced tea instead of a twisted tea. Because it's going to dilute the tea taste a little bit so that it's not overpowering the rest of the alcohols. But you also want to make it a little bit tangy. But again, I can't use triple sec. So that means I'm going to use the orange extract. Now, you do not have to put a lot of the orange extract in. This is it. That's all you really need to put in. But you can put more, and I have, depending on how tangy I want it to be. Then you can add in a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice if you have it. And that will give it like a really tangy, like a really kind of a bitter iced tea. Kind of depending on where you get the Long Island iced teas, they can be a little bit more bitter. So if you prefer it that way, then you could add a little bit more. In this particular video, I didn't use any lime juice. But 
sometimes I do add it in because it does bring it just a little bit closer to that bitter taste that I'm telling you about. So again, experiment guys. I'm just kind of giving you the base recipe of what I do and how it works for me. Now we're just going to shake everything up. We're going to pour it into the glass. And even though the lemon iced tea that we put in there kind of gives it a little bit of a tea look, I like the darker amber look of the Long Island iced teas. So I still add in the splash of cola. In this case, it just happens to be a Pepsi Zero Sugar, but I've used Coke Zero Sugar as well, as well as Diet Pepsi and Diet Coke. Um, any regular, pretty much Diet Cola, now the reason why it has to be a diet soda though is because we're trying to make a low carb Long Island iced tea. And that means you gotta mix with ingredients that have little to no carbs. And diet sodas don't have sugar, so they don't have carbs. Pour that in there. Just going to use this chopstick to stir it up. Hey guys, there's our Long Island iced tea. Now again, I'm going to be completely honest with you. This tastes like the genuine article. Again, I'm telling you right now, try this out. Try it. If you want, like I said, add in a little bit of lime juice just to make it a little bit more bitter if you like. I'm telling you, this tastes like a Long Island iced tea and it's about as alcoholic as you could possibly get. Now, quite frankly, when I mean alcoholic, guys, part of my language, but it is alcoholic as f so if you don't want to consider this the genuine article, you don't want to consider it a real Long Island iced tea because it has actual tea in it, that's up to you. But for me, it's the genuine article. It tastes damn great. And I hope you all enjoy it. This is the Metal Geek, guys. Not wearing the sunglasses this time. I don't know if you noticed or even care, but this is the Metal Geek saying, have a great one, guys. Drink responsibly, but enjoy when you do have a drink. Have a great one.